Hey guys, Eric here, Florida High Performance. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. I'm standing in front of a 2018 Grand Sport Corvette we just finished up for our customer, Jimmy. Now, you may remember a previous Grand Sport Corvette we covered, Rob's. You can check it out in the other episode on our channel. That thing was crazy. It had a highly high ram and a big supercharger. It didn't even have a hood on it. As badass as that car is, as much as I love it, what I really love about Jimmy's Grand Sport is actually it's minimal modifications, but we still picked up a ton of power and he's able to drive this every day without any issues. So stay tuned. You're gonna like this episode. We're gonna go over a lot of detail as far as the supercharger and the engine work we did. And I think I'm gonna convince you at the end, this car really is the ultimate Corvette daily driver. Hey guys, welcome back. If it's your first time visiting our channel, make sure you subscribe. We got a lot of really good videos. You can check out the other ones when you have some free time. A lot of valuable information. I go into a lot of technical information. So check those out. And if you're returning, welcome back. We appreciate your support. All right, guys, so let's get right into things. Jimmy contacted us and really was only looking for a supercharger for the Grand Sport. He drives this car every day to work. He wasn't looking to build some crazy track monster. He wanted to keep the hood. So we ordered the supercharger. As time went on, the build progressed from, let's just put a blower on my Grand Sport to, hey, let's throw a set of cylinder heads on there. Let's swap the cam. Let's throw a set of headers on there. So it really went from just a supercharger to a full build, which is really what I like to do. The reason I like to do that is because if things are coming apart and things are being taken apart, dismantled, I always like to put better parts in. And that's exactly what we did in this build. It was very important though that we maintain that daily driver aspect of this car. Again, factory hood, drive every day, no major mechanical issues. He needs this to get to work. And I consulted with Jimmy and we came up with a package that we're gonna go over in detail now. We're gonna talk about the parts we chose, why we chose them, the power that this car made. And I think at the end of this video, we'd be very impressed by the gains that we were able to get with very minimal modifications. First thing we're gonna talk about is the ANA supercharger kit. This head unit is a V3 TI trim head unit that ANA supplies when you order an ANA supercharger kit for your C6 or your C7 or even your C5. It's kind of an upgraded version of their street blower and that's exactly what we went with. You also notice that the finish is polished. Polished is actually their standard finish, which is really nice considering some of the other uh, brands out there of centrifugal superchargers actually charge you extra for that. So um, it's just a really good looking unit works really, really well. And for street cars, even for race cars, these head units will push plenty of air, more than he's ever gonna need. The Innovators West Balancer here is stock diameter, and we went with a four inch diameter pulley on the head unit. So with this particular pulley configuration, the four inch upper and the factory diameter lower, we were able to get about six pounds of boost out of the setup. So in previous videos, we've touched on the cooling issues that Corvettes typically have when you start modifying them. No different in this car, so we went with the DeWitt's fan and radiator upgrade. They're specifically made for the C7. They work really well. They're direct replacement drop-in parts, and uh, they do their job really, really well to keep the engine coolant temps down. For this particular car, we turned to the pros at GPI, Guatney Performance. We went with their Stage 2 naturally aspirated cam. A couple of reasons for that. One was it was on the aggressive end, but didn't require an aftermarket converter, which was really big, so we could keep the stock stall converter. We didn't have to modify the eight-speed automatic transmission. And the best part about it is, it worked well with the centrifugal supercharger. And of course, most importantly, it chops. Man, I don't know about you guys, but I love a choppy cam. I mean, there's nothing better. Am I right? You'll also notice the engine is equipped with our custom billet LT valve covers. These particular valve covers have coil provisions. We also sell the valve covers that do not have coil provisions should you want to relocate the coils. We offer both. We offer them in different colors, black, red, any kind of custom powder coat. We could even put your logo in them. So check those things out. If you want more information on the valve covers, you can contact us. Just comment below and I'll be sure to respond to you. So like any build here at Florida High Performance, if we're taking a part off of the engine, we always look for ways to improve it. So we went to the professionals at Late Model Engines as always, and we had them fully CNC these cylinder heads. And what's great about that is it's a factory casting, but it's been CNC'd in the intake and exhaust port. They upgrade the valves, they work the guides and the seats. And basically what you get back is a modified factory GM casting that's gonna handle the power we're, we're adding to the car, that's gonna handle the airflow that we need, especially with that GPI stage two cam. They fit well, they take factory rocker arms, 
and they're just a really, really nice piece, and we use a lot of those cylinder heads on a lot of the builds here at Florida High Performance. So with any performance build, what goes in must come out, right? So in this case, we've got a supercharger making six pounds of boost, forcing all kinds of air in the cylinder. The cylinder heads and the cam are doing everything they can to get that air moving through and moving out. So we uh, mated this entire engine build with a long tube set of headers from American Racing. Went with an inch and seven eighths primary to a three inch collector and a three inch off-road X-pipe that mates to the factory NPP mufflers. While the car was here and while we were modifying the engine, Jimmy was also interested in putting a set of wheels in the car and lowering it down. So we helped him with that as well. You'll notice the car sits a lot lower than it does from the factory. We were able to achieve that stance with a set of lowering bolts. Simple lowering bolts, the same as you've had in the fifth and sixth generation Corvettes. It's the same thing on the C7s. A couple of bolts at the end of the leaf spring, you adjust them. These particular bolts are aftermarket, so we got even more of a drop out of it, but that's what gives us this really, really nice tuck. And I think it looks great. As far as the wheels go, Jimmy picked out a set of HF5s from our friends at Vossen down in Miami. These wheels fit this car really, really well. They almost have that OEM look to them with the multiple spokes. They got a really aggressive concave offset in the rear. We had them powder coated gloss black, and I have to tell you, it really tied this entire build together. I absolutely love how these wheels look in these cars. So before we start any big build like this at our shop, we like to baseline the vehicle. We do that for a few reasons. Obviously to get the real world horsepower and torque numbers before we do any modifications, and to make sure that there's no other mechanical issues going on with the car that we're not aware of or even the customer's not aware of. So, if you're wondering, this stock LT1 with a Corsa intake on it made 397 rubble horsepower and 418 foot-pounds of torque. Once we added all the modifications, the supercharger, the cylinder heads, the cam, the headers, and we put it all together and we got it back on the dyno, we turned to our friends MS Tuning out in Houston, Texas for a remote tune using HP tuners. We were able to get 604 rear wheel horsepower and 574 foot-pounds of torque out of this bad boy. That's on six PSI, 93 octane, no meth, stock converter, what I would consider a mild cam, really no fueling upgrades, stock injector, stock fuel pump. That is a ton, a ton of power, a ton of gain, over 200 rear wheel horsepower on six pounds of boost. Whoa. Well guys, that about wraps up the video here on Jimmy's Grand Sport. We hope that you learned a few things, that just because you don't have a thousand rear wheel horsepower doesn't mean you can't have something that's still quick and faster than 99% of the stuff on the road. This is the working man's Corvette, and that's who I built it for, a working man. Had a good time building it. Hope you learned something in this video. If you like the content, please hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, comment below. If you've got a Corvette at home that you want to build or that you're building and you have questions on, please comment, I'll get back to you. Until then, I'll see you next time. Woo! What year is this car again? Let me check the door. Oh God, it's an 18. I would have that one up. So welcome back. So welcome back. <laughs> so stay, stay tuned while we screw this video up. <laughs> so make sure you stay tuned to this video as we dive in more and dip more. We're gonna talk more about that later in this video. So make sure you stay tuned and kiss my ass.